Hello and welcome to the fifth podcast from AMSYS Training. Today's subject will be the setup and configuration of Apple's mail server. As always, if you do have any suggestions for future podcasts, then please feel free to email us at podcasts at amsys.co.uk. To get us started, let's look at the steps required to get the Apple mail server up and running. We're going to start off with Apple's server admin tool to configure and start the mail service. Then we're going to need to create some accounts using Workgroup Manager. We'll be using Apple's built-in email client to set up the accounts. Then we're going to switch back to server admin to set up webmail. The final two steps will be configuring the junk mail and virus filtering, and finally a bit about log management. The tools that we'll be using will be server admin for the email server configuration, and also workgroup manager to create the email user accounts. So we're going to start on the server, just begin by clicking on server admin in the dock. When the program launches, enter your domain name or IP address, your username and password, and then just click on connect. When the service is launched, look about halfway down for mail, and then click on settings. Now we're going to enable POP and IMAP in this case and also SMTP to allow us to send mail and you need to enter the domain name for the mail server. And the same for the host name. Once you've entered the information just click on save. Next we go to relay, we just want to check that the server's IP address is allowed to send mail which I'll be coming back to later. And if it is, just click on Start Service. There will be a pause of a few seconds, but once it's finished, it should turn to a red Stop button. Like so. The next step is going to be to create some email accounts. So we need to launch Workgroup Manager, either from the dock or straight from Server Admin, as we're doing here. And again, enter the domain name or IP address of your server, followed by your username and password. Once you've entered the information, just click on Connect. You'll get a warning saying you're working in the local NetInfo database, so you can dismiss this by clicking on OK. And then select your user account, click on Mail, and then click on Enabled, as you can see on screen. I'm going to leave it with POP and IMAP to give the user a choice, and then click on Save. So just see this process again, click on the account, click Enabled, and then click on Save. And it's as simple as that. The next part of the setup is to lock down your SMTP service. Now I'd just like to take a moment to explain why we need to do this. And it's to prevent your server becoming something called an open relay. An open relay is a mail server that will send email without checking the identity of the sender. So in this example, there's email coming from somebody at fakeaddress.com and sending spam email to me. Now if your mail server is locked down and requires SMTP authentication, this will stop the spammer from sending unsolicited email through your mail server. So back to server admin, click on mail settings and advanced. Then under SMTP, click on plain, which will require the users to authenticate before sending mail. Then finally click on save. Next we need to configure the client. So if you go to your dock and click on Apple mail, once it's launched, you'll be presented with a setup assistant, so click continue, then select the account type, so we're going to pick pop for this account, and then we'll just call it admin account. So we'll leave the full name as it is, and then enter the email address of admin at amsys.podcasts.co.uk. We'll also copy and paste this domain address, as we'll be using it in a minute. Click on continue, then for the incoming mail server, paste in the same domain address you copied a second ago and enter the user account's password. Click on continue, enter the outgoing mail server again, and then enter a username and password for the SMTP service. If you click on continue, just confirm all the details are correct. Click on continue again, and then click on done. 
So now that we're up and running, I'm just going to send a test email. So I'm going to click on new, enter the other email address that I set up in Workgroup Manager, which is dave at amsys.podcasts.co.uk. Give it a subject of hello Dave. And then enter some text in the body of the email. And I'll just put can you read this. Once I've done, I'll click on send. And that should send the email to Dave's account. So now we need to set up Dave's account, so we select pop from the account type, enter Dave's email as the account description, full name is Dave and email address is dave at amsys.podcasts.co.uk. Once that's entered, just click on continue. Incoming mail server is, as always, amsys.podcasts.co.uk. Username of Dave and then I just enter my password. I click on use authentication, Dave and password again, and then click on continue. Check the details, click on continue, and then click on done. Now I should be able to click on get mail and receive the email from the administrator. And there it is. So just to prove it's working, we'll reply to the message. I'll click on reply, enter some text. So can I read it? I certainly can, thank you. And then I'll just click on send. And that's it, gone to the administrator. And then if I go to the administrator's account, again, click on get mail, and there's my reply. Next, we're going to set up webmail. So if you launch server admin from the dock, once it's launched, just click on the arrow under computers and services to get up the list and then click on web which is down the bottom and finally click on settings. In the settings screen click on sites, click on the default site that's set up and click on the pencil icon to edit. For the domain name just enter amsys.podcasts.co.uk and then I'll change the IP address to the server's IP address 10101 Leave all the other settings as default and click on save. Next we click on options and then click on the button that says webmail. Then if we save that and just click on start service. Then same as mail, after a few seconds it will turn to a red button that says stop service. Next we need to go to the client computer and launch Safari from the dock. Once it's launched, I'll enter the domain name, which is amsys.podcasts.co.uk forward slash webmail, and it will bring up the authentication screen. So I'll just enter Dave and the password, and hit enter to log in. And it takes me straight to the inbox, and as you can see, the email from the administrator. I'll go back to the inbox and if I want to delete the mail just select the email and then I can click on delete. So now we have a fully functional webmail service. Next we're going to configure a little bit of junk mail and virus filtering. So if I go back to server admin, mail and settings and click on filters. First I'm going to click on the button that says scan email for junk. And I'm going to change it down to three hits, which means I only need three comments for it to be classed as junk mail. I'll leave it so that the junk mail will still be delivered, but it will be marked as junk mail. And for viruses, I'll click scan email for viruses and set it to be quarantined. And this means that any infected emails will be sent to a specified email address. In this case, it will be virus at amsys.podcasts.co.uk. Finally, you want to switch on the service to update the junk mail and virus database once a day or whenever is preferable. And finally, just click on save. And to finish up, we're just going to change some of the log settings. So in mail, go to settings and logging. Now the SMTP log detail is set to debug, which will create huge log files. So I'm just going to change that to warning. 
for IMAP and POP, I'm going to change that also to warning. And the junk mail and virus log detail, I'll leave that at warning. And I'll also set it to archive the log files every seven days. And then just click on save. So there you go, now you have a fully functional mail server, courtesy of Apple's Mac OS X server version 10.4. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you would like any more information about Apple training, then please contact us at training at amsys.co.uk and I'll see you next time. Thank you.